Hey there, fellow real estate enthusiasts. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jason Hubbard with eXp Realty. I'm a real estate agent, I'm a real estate appraiser, and I'm a local real estate investor here in Arizona. Today we're getting into a topic that investors need to understand, the rules of a 1031 exchange. I've done plenty of these as an agent and as an investor, and what I found is most people don't understand exactly how they work. So my goal today is to provide any kind of help that I can to make it a little bit easier to understand. Before we get started, if you want to learn a little bit about capital gains, I just did a video on capital gains. Click the link above for that video about short-term and long-term capital gains and how you can kind of figure out the best way to move forward. Okay, let's get started on 1031 exchanges. First things first, let's clarify what a 1031 exchange is. A 1031 exchange is a powerful tax strategy that allows real estate investors to defer capital gain taxes when selling one investment property and reinvesting the proceeds into another like-kind property. But there are specific rules you must follow to reap the benefits. Rule number one, the properties involved must be of like-kind. This doesn't mean they have to be identical. It means they, they must be of the same nature character or class. For instance, you can exchange a residential property for a commercial property or vacant land. Rule number two, the timing is crucial. You have 45 days from the sale of your original property to identify potential replacement properties. Then you have a total of 180 days from the sale to complete the exchange. These deadlines are strict, so you must make sure you're on top of your timeline. Rule number three, you can't touch the money. To maintain the tax deferred status of your exchange, you must use a qualified intermediary, often referred to as a QI. They will hold your funds in an escrow account until the exchange is completed, preventing you from receiving the sale proceeds directly. Rule number four, the value of the replacement property must be equal to or greater than the property you sold. This means you can't downsize unless you want to trigger a taxable event. Rule number five, if you have debt on the property you sold, you must replace it with an equal or greater amount of debt on the new property to maintain the same or greater leverage. If you don't, the uncovered debt can, can be considered as taxable boot. This is a lesson I learned the hard way when I sold a property and I went to do a 1031 exchange and I didn't do it for enough and I had to buy a second property to satisfy that 1031 exchange. Rule number six, the taxpayer on the original property's title must be the same as the taxpayer on the new property's title. In other words, you can't swap properties between different owners. Rule number seven, this is for the vacation home enthusiasts. The property involved in a 1031 exchange must be used for business or investment purposes only, not, purple, not personal use. There you have it. The essential rules of a 1031 exchange. These rules are critical to understand because if you break them, you can end up with an unexpected tax, a tax bill that can really set you back. If you found this video helpful and want to dive in even deeper into the world of real estate investment and tax strategies like the 1031 exchange, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and leave any questions or comments down below. Also. Please remember, always consult with a tax professional or a 1031 exchange expert before undertaking any 1031 exchange. 
This is super important as they can make sure you are making a wise decision when deciding whether a 1031 exchange is the right option for you. Thanks for tuning in today and I'll see you on the next video.